You already know what it is. My name is Prince Prince. I have special guest. This guest, I mean, when I first came across his music and his platform, I knew that he was different. I mean, not too many people in Minnesota reached a milestone of 10,000 views, or excuse me, 10,000 followers, 20,000 followers, 30,000 followers. We're looking at somebody with over 40,000 followers on Instagram and he's only growing. This isn't something that happened overnight. He has been doing this for years and I'm uh, honored to have him uh, on my platform and to introduce him to St. Paul and the entire state of Minnesota. Uh, welcome to the show. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What yeah. do you go by? Yeah, like, my name is Polo Smalls. Uh, grew up in Cambridge, you know, and everything. Uh, you know, we're back at it, you know. New yeah. to the city, kind of, in a way. You know, I've only been doing this for about a year. Okay. C Cambridge where? Uh, Cambridge, Minnesota. Okay. Over by North Branch and stuff. Okay, okay. So, when, when, when you, how did you come up with your name? Talk about that. Polo Smalls. Uh, so, when I was like 17, I worked at a little fast food job in Culver's at, uh, in Hudson, Wisconsin. Um, and it just kind of was kind of like a small group of people that we could rely on type thing. Um, you know, Polo stands for players only live once. Um, so they started calling me Polo Albert, you know, as, as Fat Albert, because, you know, he was, he was different. Um, but then that kind of slowly changed to uh, you're killing me, Smalls, because I just started cracking my shell and becoming more of a person and being, you know, more of a human um, within myself, you know, like learning different things like, hey, you know, my voice matters, my opinion matters, you know, I am my own person. Um, and that just kind of, you know, grew into Smalls and that just kind of stuck. Right. I just kind of ran with it, you know, it just kind of fits. And if you kind of look at the dude and kind of look at me in the way, it kind of looks the same. I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, man, listen, getting right into it, one of the first things that I noticed, they say you had a tattoo. Facts. All nines or all sixes? Triple nine. Okay, triple nines, triple nines. Talk about it. What, what's the strategy or what's the thinking behind all nines? Uh, the triple nine strategy is basically um, something Juice World started um, before he passed away. Um, it's to take any negative situation and make it a positive one, whether it be the worst of the worst, the best of the best. You just put your best effort forward, turn that into something greater than you can accomplish, you know, within, you know, just simple things. Like, you know, just taking all, like, the hardships that you've ever dealt with, like depression, the anxiety, the suicide, th you know, thoughts, just everything deep, you know, and just turning the best of it, you know. Like, we all only got one chance to live, and just making that happen, you know. Yeah, talk about Juice WRLD and his untimely death. We just also lost... Uh one of the take, yep, take off. Uh, take off. Uh, were you a fan of his music? Uh, I won't lie to you. I didn't listen to a ton of it, but the songs like that I did listen to um, were on repeat usually. Yeah. I won't even lie to you. As an artist, when you think about other artists who lose their life, do you do you think about that being the same outcome from you? Does that does that does that cross your mind? Um, I, I won't lie to you. I try to stay away from the situations that they try to be in. Um, that, that, I mean, I won't lie to you, that's a hard question just because you never really honestly know. Um, but I don't foresee myself being in a similar situation like that, but you honestly just never know. Um, you know, you never know when the money comes in or stuff changes or people change. Or life just happens, you know, depression can grow worse or it can get better. You know, you just never know, so. And then in Juice World, when you talk about Juice World, you, talk, you think about the opioids and the drugs and stuff like that. What do you think about as an artist, your generation, you know, talking about that, living that out, fentanyl, pills, Percocets, and... and and expressing that in the music, what do you think about that? Um, I mean, if that's what you're really living by and that's what you're doing in your life, I mean, you, you, I guess that's what you're going to talk about and that's just going to be what's influencing your music and your everyday patterns. But um, I feel deep down, like, if it's something you're not really doing or portraying, um, I feel like you shouldn't be really talking about it or putting it out there because people really will listen to it. Um, and it could just be the one song that you have that's talking straight up about it and you could have, you know, one person or 100,000 different people trying something new that they've never done before and... That could be the one time that they don't come back. Mm. Now, talk about going back into the 40,000. What is that like? I mean, a lot of artists ha won't even reach that milestone. What is that like having 40,000 people who decided to follow you on Instagram and to, you know, see what your journey is going to be like? Um, I think it's kind of crazy just for the simple fact is, like, it's a lot of hard work of just interacting with different people every day. Like, it, you wouldn't imagine how many people actually hit me up and say, you know, how's life going? What can we do for you? How's... You know, whatever it could be, you know, whether it be, hey, can you help me out with a beat or a graphic design thing? Um, can you help me out with this song? Um, it's just, it's kind of crazy just to put in all that effort and time into something and watching it grow. Um, you can make a post, it could get 50 likes, or you can make a post and it get 2,000. Um, it's just really what, you know, the time spent putting the content mm -hmm. you're putting out. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you do more than just music. You actually do artist development. Uh, we're making, like, graphics and... 
mm-hmm. and things like that. You, you talked about having an artist package where you can get them some type of write-ups and things like that. What yeah, you talking about that? Yeah, I just, uh, I basically signed on as an ambassador with uh, Peer Branding, and they offer um, very good um, sources for, like, blog placements and articles, um, like Lyrical Lemonade, um, Rolling Stone, um, Billboard, Hip Hop, Weekly, all that, you know, all the fun stuff, The Breakfast Club. I mean, really, it does just comes with a budget. You know, if you get enough of them, like you said, you can pretty much get that blue check mark easy. Mm. You know, they are the reliable sources. It's just putting that money forward. I won't lie to you. The budget's, uh, the budget's needed for it. Um, but if you can put the money behind it, you're going to get everything out of it, really. I won't lie to you. So basically, let, let me sit back a little bit. You, you're not just thinking about your, your career in terms of just some type of viral sensation. You're actually doing the business of being an artist? Well, the one thing that I learned right away is you have to really learn the business first before you can really do anything. Like, you can make quality music, but at the end of the day, if you don't know how to market it and put it out um, or make it appealing for some people, um, it's going to be hard. Um, but I realized, like, if, if you put that time and effort into it and you do it all right, like, you, you can actually see something grow. I mean, I won't lie, I started with basically nothing at the beginning. And to grow into now, just to see it, like the only thing I can really do is, you know, get that budget right, get everything behind it, and actually push it to the people that want to hear it. Mm. And I mean, that is harder, you know, to some people, but if you really sit back and think, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that will listen if you put it in front of the right people. Mm. That's true. I mean, right now, you got the digital era, it's the, it's the digital age, and everything's on the internet. And talk about visuals. When it comes down to visuals, visuals are important to uh, have as an artist to be able to distribute those visuals, to be creative with those visuals. Who do you, who do you go to when it's time to execute an idea that you have in your head in terms of visuals for your music videos? Uh, like so for music videos, I definitely go to Nightfall every time just because the, the way we work together is really, I, I can't lie, it's just like a duo, man. It's just like me and I have the one idea, he has the other, we kind of put it together and it comes whole um, every time. I won't lie, he shot all my music videos at this point and he's going to be probably continue doing that yeah. um, going forward. As far as graphics, um, I usually try to do it myself, but if I don't, um, I usually go to uh, Free God Savvy. Yeah. Free God Savvy be snapping on him. Um, there's a dude named Formats that's been helping me out, kind of learn stuff. Um, Jason Wade from High Caliber in Colorado has been kind of showing me what's up. Um, but I mean, it's pretty much just like the same four or five people from my graphic, my, my cover art's up, up my bed. Um, but my music video, I won't lie, Nightfall's just been snapping. He's just been getting better and better. Now, does Nightfall also do, do, does he do, do music as well? Yep, he's an artist as well, yep. Because I think I've seen y'all in the, the music video. Yeah, he'd be snapping on the features, I won't lie. Not just for me, for everybody, I won't lie. I, I won't lie, he's kind of slept on. Does he go by Nightfall as a rapper too? Correct, okay. yep, yep. Okay. How did y'all, how did y'all get connected? Uh, honestly, uh, random friendship kind of thing. I like, saw a post about him looking for an artist, um, and I was kind of, like I said, new. Um, at the time, I was getting... Um, I would say probably used by a ton of people in the city at the time, you know. So I was getting, handing out money left and right, trying to find the right people to do business with. Um, but at the end of the day, I finally found, you know, someone, hey, looking for an artist, brand new opportunities, you know, music videos, whatever I can do to support you. Um, you know, I, I met him one day. I drove all, you know, an hour out to meet him in uh, St. Paul, sorry. Um, and then, you know, after that, basically, it just grew into, like, really a lifelong friendship, you know. So... You know, anytime we do a song together, a music video, like I said, we just kind of collide, you know, perfectly, and boom, we get it done. Now, now when it comes down to performance, performing, have you, have you performed yet? I've performed a couple of times, oh. the Red Sea, uh, Underground Music Cafe, uh, what, and what, Part Wolf. What is that like, you know, as a, as a journalist, when I'm going on out there in the field and I'm actually watching an artist perform and I'm seeing them do what they're great at, like, it's like watching, like, an athlete do what they love. Mm-hmm. Like, Everyone's different. Like everyone performs different. They bring a different energy. Some people want the crowd quiet. Some people want that, you know, that, that crowd to be pumped. What is what's your what's your what's your presentation like when you perform? Um, I won't lie to you. I'm still kind of nervous when I do perform just because I am kind of newer at it. But I would say from where I started to now, it's definitely getting a lot better. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes I do get scared just because there's you know new people, or you know you just never know if someone's gonna like the song you're about to play because sometimes you do want to try new new you know new sets or new songs. Um, but I won't lie to you, it's been getting a lot better. Um, it's just something that I've definitely had to overcome. Now, when it comes down to the music, when it comes down to the music, uh, how would you describe the messaging that you want to uh, project out to your audience? Um, I would definitely say, you know, I'm just taking um, basically my pain, my stress, and anxiety, and portraying it in a way that people can understand and relate to it. Um, I'm, I'm not really trying to talk about things that I don't have or I'm not trying to do. 
Um, I really just try to keep it like what's going on in my life. You know, I might talk about money a couple of times and stuff like that, but I mean, genuinely, it's, I won't lie to you, it's about usually my pain, my depression, and what I'm going through at the time. Yeah. I, I think that's nice. I mean, in town right now, we got Rod Wade. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lane for that. And I think that he's brave enough to, you know, like get in front of the mic and say, you know, my heart's been broke so many mm -hmm. times. So, like, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a lane for what you do and, mm -hmm. and, and what you're trying to, you know, uh, the messaging that you're trying to give to the people. And I think that, like, once you find, like, not, not once, you already have your 40,000, but once you have your audience, it's just about, like, feeding them, like, you know, what they want. Like, because, like, Trippy Ray, do you, do you like his music? Yep, okay. absolutely. What is it about his music that you like? You can just kind of hear the struggle that he's kind of been through and, like, the songs that he does. I'm not going to say I bump every song by him, but some of the songs that he, like I said, does make, you know, it just kind of puts you in a spot where, like, you know, I've kind of been there. Yeah. Or, you know, like some of the songs, you know, he's kind of higher energy and you want to feel better about yourself. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of the energy that he puts into the music you can tell is there. Like, he really wants to make music yeah. um, compared to some people that are just trying to push out songs after song after song. Do you think that somebody could, that multiple people can make it from Minnesota? Like, could there be another KC pool up? Oh, yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot of talent, but I feel like a lot of people get lost early um, and they kind of get kind of full of themselves in a way. Um, and I don't mean it disrespectfully, but it's just kind of the truth. Um, I mean, you get to a certain point in th where you start charging everybody a certain amount of numbers and you try to put on a big persona that you're really not doing. And I'm not discrediting people. Like, yeah, they might be doing a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, it's like there's things that they could be m investing more of their time into. Um, I'm, like a big thing is like watching people go out and party and do all this other stuff when they could be putting money into that one song that they have on their phone that they're trying to play at everybody at that club. Um, and like I said, it's, it's not a disrespect thing. It's just like seeing other people invest into the wrong things all the time, I feel, is just a big problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I look at it the same way. Like there's a song, like when I'm in the gym, it's a song by like Meek Mills. He talk about uh, partying every night, they'll do it for me. I'm trying to get cake. So it's like, I, I'm on the same page as you. It's like sometimes when it's time to go, it's Friday night. We could be really outside. So it's like, I, 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 got, I think that like seeing somebody come out at 9 o'clock at night on a Friday night, that's like passion. And that's like, I'm like, man, when, I, when we were going back and forth in text messages, I'm like, man, this man, is he's serious about what he wants to do. And it's like, that those are the people that I'm trying to connect with, those people who are seriously trying to push the culture forward. Uh, what do you think about podcast platforms and uh how they looking in Minnesota? Are you paying attention to the different podcast platforms? Um, I've, I've watched a couple of them, and I kind of agree with a couple of them, but some of them, I won't lie to you, it's just kind of fluttered um, BS, yeah, yeah, yeah. really. I won't lie to you. Um, I feel like they could be really targeting certain things that are going on in the city that actually really matter versus, I don't know, just screaming and hollering and having a good like party, basically. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like the whole business side is kind of lopsided on it where it could be more focused. Um, you know, I'm not saying you can't charge for your podcast, and I'm not saying, you know, all that stuff's not the issue. I'm just saying it could be more focused and drive to actually giving the artist, you know, a chance to grow coming onto your platform versus you investing into something and it just being a one-time thing we share a million times and hopefully people watch it. Right. And that's just, I feel like if you have more replay value in the content, um, it'll probably do a lot better and it'll bring more people onto it. You know, it's, you know, it lasts forever. So it's just like, I don't think people really realize, like, you're wasting your time in a sense, but I don't mean that. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like you could be really focused and, you know, driven to a certain point where it's like we're actually seeing new people every week and there's certain people that are like, hey, let's talk about this next week. And you're already booked out and you already have stuff planned because people are already telling what to do. I just... He's sharp. I mean, he's sharp. I mean, how old are you? 25. Are you sharp? Are you are you underneath any labels or any management? You like, I'm on both sides of the fence. Okay. Under Nightfall, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so meaning like under Nightfall, he's also like like a, a manager too. Like yeah, basically, manager, CEO, you know, videographer. Okay. He's basically everything for me at this okay. point right now. I like that. I like that. Like, so I gotta, I gotta meet this guy there. I mean, I, I've been hearing his name circulating in the city. Um, never got to meet him. Um, but I mean, it's. I mean, obviously, if he's helping you get to where you are then, and you're saying that I think that he's definitely I won't lie to you he slept on as an artist and definitely a videographer I know people are coming around I ain't gonna lie to you but he like he, he's snapping and really putting the time and effort into each video to make it like the vision that people really want let me go a little deeper so you, you say so in this um, space do you classify yourself as like a hip hop artist really I try to go by musical artist because I won't lie to you I've done 
Um, like I have a rock song, I have country songs. Um, I'm working on more of like R&B, um, but I won't lie to you, when I did start, it was mostly hip hop okay. because I was like, this is what I want to do. And then I kind of worked with Nightfall and I heard, you know, him using his voice more and, you know, just wa watching other people record, you know, watching people just punch in and out and just be like, wow, that guy really just did that in like 15 minutes. He just did a whole song. I can't even do that. It takes me an hour. No, no. <laughs> so when you're in a booth, are you one take with it? Or are you, how do you, how do you, how, what's your process like? So when I started my first couple songs, I probably, like, so let's say the 13 out on Spotify, I wrote all those. All right. And I won't lie to you, that took a lot of time. Um, and the biggest thing people are saying, you know, the way I emphasized words or said things, and you could kind of tell I was reading it off my phone. Um, but a lot of the newer music that I'm making, um, I've kind of learned to just roll with, the, roll with the beat, really. I won't lie, just kind of one take it. I, I mean, that's just kind of where I'm at. If I don't like it, you know, punch it back in. But so, so, you're doing, so you're doing like a lot of punching in and out, but not writing it. Uh, I mean, I don't be doing the little segments where it's like, here, little punch, little punch, little okay. punch. I, I try to make you know, solid lines at least, so that way I can keep going off to the next line. Do you write the hook? Not usually. Okay. Uh, like that's, that's the way that people are creating. They just, you know, free flow and free spirit, and people's processes is all different. Uh, what's your parents say about you pushing this and pursuing this as a career? Um, at first they thought it was kind of crazy, like, you ain't going to make no money or do <laughs> nothing like that, and you ain't gonna, no one's going to listen to your music. And I said, you know, it's not about the money, and it's not about the people listening, it's just me expressing myself. Mm -hmm. um, so at first it kind of gave me, the hardest time about it just because you're like you know your disbelief really like we're not going to believe in you but you know you got it i know you do and then slowly it was like whoa you're actually i understand and then i actually started playing it it was like kind of weird because they're showing all their friends and family you got people all over the world really playing it i won't lie like my stepmom is from the uk and she got people over there playing the music and everything like it's just kind of weird to see how they they didn't believe at the beginning, but then they just kind of cracked their shell. We're like, all right, we're gonna show everybody. So we can, if, if they're playing it over there, we can call you an international artist. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna say everybody's playing it, but theoretically, it's. I mean, it's true. As long as it's played one by one person in another country, in another continent, you are international. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I see well. some of the numbers that you had posted. I seen some of the thirty thousand even years ago. Before before we go, I'm gonna ask a couple more questions about childhood. I seen mm -hmm. when you early on you were playing football. Mm -hmm. Did you just give it up early? Uh I won't lie to you, you know, I was a bigger dude than I had asthma and it was you know, I got to high I I won't lie to you, middle school was cool, you know, I was playing with my friends, you know, we're having a good time, it was a blast. I got to high school man, I was like, you know, I could put in the work, I could be doing this, but it's just it's not fun anymore. Yeah. Because then, you know, you have the five people that are doing uh, really shitty, yeah. and then you have to be pretty much tortured to do, you know, yeah. 50 sets of up-downs or run 50 yeah. sprints because the five people don't care. Yeah. And then just kind of, I don't know, I'm not saying I gave up on it, but it was just something like, I can invest my time into something better. Yeah. Two last questions before you go. I, we always got to throw a controversial question in there, mm -hmm. just because it might, it might send the numbers to the roof. Young Gravy made a statement uh, about the culture of hip-hop in, in Minnesota. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with somebody with 40,000 followers, you're in a position to have a voice. What do you think about uh, Young Gravy saying, uh, limiting the artists that he recognized from Minnesota? Um, I definitely... Off Chicago. Uh, see, I mean, I won't lie. In some ways, we do have like our own click fan base of people that only support these certain people. And I noticed one big thing is like, if you look at shows recently, um, it's usually all the same eight people every show they're not trying they say they're trying to bring on new content and new artists and you know try new things but it's really the same kind of overrun bs again like i said but um i feel like you know we can break that i feel like there's a lot of people really trying to break that um narrative but to say that we are a knockoff chicago i feel like is incorrect because we have our own wave and i feel like we're actually making some noise and a lot of people are paying attention to it um if you really think about it a lot of the celebrities are sitting usually in North and South Dakota recording before and while they're waiting on tour. Like, I know Polo G stays out there. Um, and, you know, we're basically the center of celebrities traveling back and forth. So it's like to say that we're a knockoff of another city is incorrect because I feel like if you play music here and you play music there, it's going to be completely different. Oh, wow. Well, Young Gravy, you heard it here on Chris Kumi Live. Man, this is not a knockoff Chicago. We got our own sound and our own way. With that being said, last uh, last question before you go. If there's some artists that you uh, want to give a shout out that you see pushing in the city, uh, can you drop your social media handles and give a couple shout outs to some artists that you see in the city? Hey, but be careful too, because sometimes when you forget a little name or something like that, but oh, you ain't shouting me out. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so none of the shout out BS. I ain't gonna lie to you, but uh, 
my social basically is Polo Smalls. That's Polo Smalls with two Z's at the end. Um, then that's everywhere. Um, Nicholas Nelson on Facebook if you really want to add me and stuff. Um, but basically for artists, I mean, like I said, no, no, none of that name BS like you said, but um, really shout out to like Nightfall for sure. Um, Soda Shine, Suavo, Free God Savvy. Um, I mean, Prince Riley's doing his shit out, out there. Um, I mean, really, there's a lot of new people. Deja Vu is coming. You know, she's going crazy right now. Um, I mean, really, there's a, there's a lot of people. I could sit here and list them all. I mean, I see a lot of talent and potential in a lot of people, and I feel like they're doing the right thing. And I feel like those people are definitely are trying to change the narrative, and that's where I see a lot of potential in the city. Any project dropping around the fourth quarter? Anything coming out before the end of the year? Well, me and Nightfall are working on something, but I can't say too much right now. It's it's definitely it's definitely heat. I won't go lie to you. It's 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 kind of crazy next level type shit. Yeah. Hey, you already know what it is. My name is Prince Kumi, man. We just had an amazing show. Hey, wherever Nightfall is, man, shout out to Nightfall, man. Hey, he pushed you. Hey, man, I love you. Sit down with you. Man.